Well, morning everybody. Uh, this is Giles Marriott and our shop here, which we run with two fellow people that help me in the shop. Um, if you'd like to come in and have a look round, I'll be pleased to show you what we do. The first thing you'll see is we do a lot of leather goods. They're all bespoken. We have all our own leathers and they're all handmade in Birmingham. And we basically can do custom of anything anybody wants in any color. We have a massive range of different leathers because there's always somebody who wants something slightly different. Um, so that's uh, actually been very successful for us. And the girls in Birmingham that make it for us are absolutely fantastic. We try and do a bit of everything in the shop. You'll see we've got rifles here. Um, we keep a fair selection of fairly modern rifles. We also do quite a bit of English double rifles, which is a, uh, a real love of my life. I absolutely adore using double rifles. But English guns has really been my passion. And I've always, always loved English guns. Uh, everything to do with them really, from the basics right through to the very best. And we try and keep a range of everything for somebody, for something for everybody really. We've got Purdy hammer guns here. There's a couple actually there. We've got ejector Horsleys. We've got a few barring wood Horsleys in at the moment. And we fit every gun, virtually every gun. We do a lot in crossover stocks, central vision stocks. We keep a fair range of everything in that. And we also custom build over and unders in really very different types of stocks because there's so many different shapes and sizes in the world there's always a need for a, a custom build and that, and that's become a real big part of our business yeah this is one actually we've just sold actually to another dealer for one of his customers um, it's an AYA crossover the thing about crossovers which most people don't understand is actually there's a, a, a vast array of different bends in a crossover and although we probably keep about 15 here, only one ever seems to fit somebody. It is, it's quite difficult to fit crossovers. Uh, and people think that just all of them are the same. They are not. There's massive differences in the amount of bend in the stocks and everything like that and the, the height of the gun. So um, we try and make sure that when you go away from here, hopefully you'll be shooting with a gun that actually fits you rather than something you just pick off the shelf and go out and try and not really understand. I personally don't believe there's many guns that you can buy off the peg that fit. So, um, as you can see, we also keep a, a vast array of accessories, old accessories. Some of these are for muzzle load, well, most they're all muzzle loading bullet molds. Uh, then you've got powder measures, screwdrivers. I've always been fascinated by all the different types of things that the English gun trade have made in the past. And everybody's always looking for the unusual. As you can see as well, we, we do quite a lot with big bores and we've probably got, I would say, the biggest collection of big bores ever to come up for sale ever. Here we've got double fours. That actually is a two gauge and a two gauge is particularly rare. Um, they made very, very few hand two gauges most of the bigger ones tend to be punt guns um, they're exceptionally heavy but you can actually just about use them in a shooting situation although i must admit i've never actually shot a two gauge shotgun i've shot most of the big double rifles but not uh, not a two gauge eights and fours plenty of uh, whatever you say, even though we've got a vast array, there will always somebody who wants something slightly different. It's quite amazing. They have these forums where they seem to discuss to the minute detail about the chamber sizes, the bore size, the choke level, the, everything to do with them, weights. Uh, and they seem to be a sort of a, almost a, a knowledgeable sector that, that sort of if you basically haven't got exactly what there is in vogue at the moment, they don't want it. Usually we can come up with something that seems to fit the bill.
Along here, really, these are just an array. We, I love Webley and Scott box locks, and we always keep a, a big selection on them because they tend to be fairly modern, two and three quarter inch. There's a big misconception that none of these older English guns can be shot with steel, and they really, Denmark have been, I sell a lot of guns abroad, especially Denmark, and they've been using steel shot over there in English guns, old English guns, Damascus guns, for at least 15 to 20 years with no problems at all. So I have no worries at all about using English guns with steel shot. Uh, as long as they haven't got any choke, and that, that's the same with a, an over and under, there should be no problems at all. Steel, you can shoot steel them because they've got modern nitro proof. They were made in the 60s and 70s, some just in the late 70s, and they're very affordable for anybody to buy. So. They're a really good choice of gun. It's just a great shame that uh, the side by side with some, uh, especially the clay pigeon fraternity, are sort of demissing. Um, whereas really, the, the game shooter, you still see people shooting just as well with side by sides as ever they do with it over and under, especially driven shooting, which is, uh, there is no detriment to using a side by side. Uh, I tend to use side by sides and I don't feel myself under uh, a gun because of it. Bill Elkin uses a Boss 20 ball with steel this last season with no problems at all. Now, I think that's a 1920s gun. Um, and he's actually used it to very good effect and Bill's a very good shot. And, uh, and we don't, none of us have a big worry about it. So I'm hoping that uh, there will be some sense come into that market because we seem to be constantly asked about whether that we can use our guns and whether they're going to be able to be functional in the future. And from my point of view, I don't have no worries at all about that. I like Browning B25s. You can always mend a B25. They just, they're bomb proof. They just don't go wrong. Uh, it's a complete rack of Browning B25s. Um, we have them from nearly new back to sort of early 70s. And in fact, everybody in this shop, I use one occasion and Julian uses one all the time and Sam uses a B25. Uh, and that's sort of testament to the, the way we like these guns. They, these are the, the sort of the guns we like to sell in over and unders, although we do do a full range of all the modern Brettas, Brownings, Marukus, and some of the the cheaper ones, again, which are reliable. I've always, as I said before, loved English guns, and this is a really, really great Purdy uh, double rifle percussion gun. People talk about the 1930s, 40s. Purdy's made the best stuff, undoubtedly, to my point of view, in the early days. Their quality was just superb. And then we come on to the opposite, where we have got this is one I've just finished building and shooting. It's a four bore double rifle with Keith Thomas. It's a very fine shot. It's taken me about 10 years to make this double rifle. It's been engraved by Pete Spode, stocked by Roman, and actually not that bad to shoot. I've, I've, we've all shot it, even Sam, who really only weighs about eight stone, if, if eight stone, and uh, he, he shot it with, and actually not, it's not too frightening at all to shoot. And uh, here is a, a brand new double four side lock that was made recently. It's good to see that we can still make these things in England because the skills are still out there to, do, to make anything really. I, I think, you know, we've got some great workmen in this country and given the chance, we can do everything we've always done, as well as, we, as well as years ago, especially engraving. There's some fabulous engravers around to this day. Uh, we, as I said to you, we, we try and do a bit of everything. And um, as you can see, we've, we've got another vast selection of bits and bobs we keep in. Something for everybody is pretty much the way. Again, a super percussion pistol, back from the day in wonderful condition, in a 450 calibre. Here we've got case pistols. 
I try and keep a selection as something for everybody. There's a four ball rifle there in a percussion. And uh, this, is a, this is a lovely thing. This is, this is a Boutte, been built as a child's gun with fabulous fabric, intricate gold work on the barrel. It's a real work of art. All the mountings in silver. And although it's French, it's still a, it's still a, a lovely, lovely thing. Let's just put that back in there. Uh, pity that gun isn't here because that's the king of Italy. So that's one of his uh, Holland Holland 577 hammer rifles. That's uh, just away at the moment. Then we're on to, again, mainly a, a range of side locks. Um, or there's a couple of Ford 10s in there. But we keep, always keep a big selection of Purdy's, Hollands and Boss in pairs and singles. The taste is sort of changing a little bit and here's a, a brand new pair by William Evans. These are made by Gorulas. they are literally been made in the last five years and they've just come in for us to sell. But they're, I actually think these are really nice, good guns for today's shooting. Personally, I prefer the older stuff, but I have to say that they are still nicely made guns. And there is definitely a, um, a market for the newer types, with, with, especially with people worrying about the steel shot. Um, I, I think some people, whatever you say, will still want to change to a, a more modern pair. And this is just an array of all different sorts of cased, there's the king of, uh, I think there's king of Spain's Alfonso is a uh, uh, E.M. Riley. That's a rifle and a set of shotgun barrels with it. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing again. Most of these tend to be in here, bigger bores. We do kick some pellet guns as well, but there you go. But again, some, I've, I've always loved accessories. Uh, and so I've always sort of collected and sold them and kept them. I used to, I've sort of calmed myself down in recent years to sort of <coughs> not have quite so much of everything. There's a, another two bore there actually. Yeah, it's absolutely, I forget what the weight of it is, but it, it's something 24 pounds. So you can imagine that's a fair lump. Uh, it is, I forget, a 54 inch barrel, which is extraordinary, three quarters choke. Uh, must have enormous range. I have no idea what you could shoot at with that, but it'd certainly be over 100 metres. They're a very effective gun, but how you ever swing one of that weight uh, to any effect, I don't know. But I know Alan Mars, when he's alive, used to shoot... I saw him shoot geese at these enormous distances, and he always used to shoot in front of them um, and actually sort of intercept them. So he didn't move the gun very much, and he was... A phenomenal shot of this uh, high range geese and I've never seen anybody better at it. It was also a very fine pheasant shot doing the same way off uh, very high birds. He literally shoot them way out in front and can land them at his feet. It was something I could never do uh, and very few people can but it did it does seem to work and I think with the guns like this as heavy as this the only way of shooting them you I don't think it's possible to sort of get a swing with them but uh, there's, a, there's always different ways with everybody of using these things. But anyway, I think I've given you a sort of a, an idea of what we do. We actually need more space because we are running out of gun space. You can see it's an absolute mess up here at the moment. Probably space for about another 200 guns up here. Bits and pieces, cases. There's an endless amount of them in here. Yeah, people will always say, why do I need so many? But when you come up here, you can rarely ever find one that actually fits. It's extraordinary. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's the bane of my life, is uh, trying to get a gun to fit in a case. It's a nightmare. But uh, hopefully when we get this all finished up here, it'll, make, uh, it'll give us a lot more space for all, the, for all the guns. We've got a central one going in as well. 
uh, so it, it, it'll help a lot. Um, everybody says, why do I need more space? And that's a very good question, but I just adore guns so much that uh, if the, you've never got enough. Uh, so I literally could keep buying and buying and buying, but it's only selling becomes a problem. But I keep saying to Julian downstairs, that's his problem. I, I'll buy, do the buying, he can do the selling. So <laughs> it's, it's difficult to stop a passion when, it, when you're almost obsessive about it. And I, and I pretty much am pretty obsessed about to the whole business. I've absolutely adored it. I started when I was about, well, I actually started it when I was 16. And every year I've got bigger and bigger. And uh, I can't see that ending. It, it's, it's just a, a great, great business with lots of great people in it. And I work very closely with a lot of other dealers and we and you have to the actual dealership network is so important to all of us and there's some great people out there that you know with good knowledge that I work closely with and we we move stock between each other and round because you, even though you can have everything you've never got the one that somebody wants at the time so uh, I don't see how anybody could get on in this industry without the help of other people it is a really important thing and and for us to have in our own workshops and we we need some more people and we're going to train two new people hopefully this this year um, into the workshop because there just isn't anybody getting trained and and we definitely definitely need new blood into the industry there's there's a huge amount of older people going out of it and retiring and dying and it, we need some new blood uh, if we're going to keep this business going and looking after these old guns, uh, it's up to us all to make an effort, especially in the sort of business I've got, to try and keep it going for years to come. Um, because the, the industry will die out, actually, not because of these guns getting old, just through the lack of people being able to mend them and do and understand them. Because the, there's a need for understanding uh, really understanding the basics of unusual mechanisms to be able to fix them. And while there's still some older people alive to teach uh, the youngsters this, we've got to make use of it. And luckily, I find all the gunsmiths I work with very supportive of anybody who's interested to learn. And uh, we send, uh, well, Sam goes off and... Uh, Another chap I use goes off to see them quite regularly to get their help on anything we're finding difficult to mend. Uh, and I can't thank them all enough for that sort of help because that's really the future. But uh, hopefully, I, I really think the business will keep going. Uh, and I, I think there's a still a good future for older English guns, older over and unders and all these things. I, I don't think that you're going to suddenly find they're going to be all... Uh, the doom and gloom and throwing them away and putting them in the, in the, the dustbin. I, I think there'll always be somebody who keeps them running.